Okay, uh, welcome uh, everyone. Uh, this talk is called Turning Points. Uh, it's about disputes and their resolution. My name is Hillel Gray. I'm, well, I'm supposed to say I'm a professor. I could say I'm a professor from Miami University, but I just retired in August. So uh, congratulations, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so, okay, we're running late. So I'll try to just uh, be relatively efficient, but feel free to just tell me to move along. Um, I think maybe I should explain why I'm doing this talk because part of the reason I'm doing this talk is just for myself. And basically I've been, um, sorry. Okay, yeah, so so what I'm gonna start with is why I'm doing this talk and then I'm gonna move through some recent research on disputes and dispute resolution in Wikipedia. I've divided up into different categories then we'll have some time for reflections or discussion. I don't have that many reflections and I'd love to hear what you think. How many people here edit on Wikipedia? Okay, that's good. How many people are familiar with disputes or feel that you're somewhat familiar just okay, so I'm not going to have to go into too much uh, background on that, which I which, you know, I assume would be the audience, but you're probably not familiar with my background. I, uh, among other things, run a project called empathy and the religious enemy uh, through my work at Miami University or retired work. Um, and one of the things that I do um, is fairly unusual. I go to um, groups that most people find deeply disturbing or offensive. They're labeled as hate groups. And I go and listen to them and I interview them and I just try to understand them. And I approach them in a very non-judgmental manner. Like I'm not trying to say whether they're right or wrong, good or bad. I'm not trying to give them my moral opinion. I'm not trying to present any particular point of view. I'm just trying to understand them. The best known group, the one I've actually focused on the most I'm sorry, you're not seeing this quite properly here. Can you remove that? You can see this again. Ah, you just take the button on the there. Okay, thank you. Is a group called Westboro Baptist Church. Has anybody heard of Westboro Baptist Church? Okay, so I won't go into a lot, but um, they do some very offensive picketing. I bring my students, and we learn and practice how to listen to people and interact with people in a non judgmental way. Okay, so I've been doing this for the last 10 years or so. Another group I work with is called Naturi Carta, a very unusual Jewish group, which is ultra-Orthodox Judaism, extremely anti-Zionist, anti-Israel. Okay. People say to me, why are you doing this work? Like, or how did you get trained to do this work? Like, how is it that you came about learning how to listen to people? Because most people are so reactive that it's just so hard to be with them, right? These groups are very provocative and being with them is very difficult. And I, you know, I sort of reflect on this and I think one of the main factors was the way I got into Wikipedia. So I got into Wikipedia around 2005 and I, I created articles, stuff like this. And I, then I got very absorbed in some very contentious disputes, very intense disputes, okay? And I came in, Try, I got interested in the idea of trying to be like a mediator, trying to sort of work things out with people and listen to the people there and really encourage them to be at an NPOV, you know, neutral point of view, and to try to approach them in that way. And um, so I got involved in some very intense uh, disputes, like there was one article that got moved maybe 20 times with six different names over the course of a few years, right? And... Uh, Anyway, I don't, I don't know that we need to go into my whole uh, Wikipedia background. I eventually ended up teaching a course at the university with wiki assignments. I'm now in the, I don't know exactly what they call it, the Wiki Education Scholars Program. So, you know, I've maintained some interest in Wikipedia over the years. Um, but I'm really interested in, like, should I get back into Wikipedia? Like, how much of my time should I put into it? And, it, it, and if so, should I spend any time trying to mediate disputes? Like, is it worth my time? And I don't know why you came to this particular session, um, but I'm hoping that you'll at least be thinking like, oh, there's research out there to help us understand the disputes better and help us understand dispute resolution efforts better, okay? Um, one thing the 
research really doesn't quite answer very well is our disputes a problem? Like, do you think that disputes are something that Wikipedia doesn't want? Do we not benefit from disputes? Is it a disadvantageous? So that's one problem. Um, that's one issue. Um, another thing that you might think about is what's been happening on dispute resolution in Wikipedia? And I haven't really seen a good history of this or a good analysis of this, but just from my perspective, having you know been very involved back like 2008 or whatever it was uh, in dispute resolution, I feel like a lot of things have changed over the years. There used to be a wiki project called dispute resolution. Anybody ever hear of that? Yeah, I think it's inactive now. Uh, there used to be a mediation committee. You ever hear of the mediation committee? You ever hear of the mediation cabal? Uh, so these groups were very, <laughs> you guys are old enough to remember this, huh? Oh, yeah. oh, you read about it, right, right, right. So this used to be, a, there was a pretty active group of people who were interested in mediation. Uh, some of them formally, some of them through this sort of like fun network that they had. Um, there was a proposal to try to have binding content discussions or binding content mediation the way there is uh, the arbitration uh, committee. Um, there was a notice board for geopolitical, ethnic, and religious conflicts. Um, there was also a working group. I don't know if anybody remembers this report. When was this, 2009 or something, 2008? Um, a report on how to deal with all these intense conflicts. There was a 2012 uh, survey that Wikipedia did. Uh, there was all sorts of efforts over the years on dispute resolution, let's just say that. Let's see, this slide, this screenshot is from 2011 what dispute resolution looked like in 2011, this is what it looks like now. So there used to be a lot more, at least, mechanisms out there. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that this is a problem. There could be that they just sort of narrowed it down to the things that work most. That's a possibility. But it could be there's much less energy into mediation now than there used to be. The main forms now of mediation processes are third opinion, uh, requests for comments, and the Dispute Resolution Notice Board, uh, DRN. Um, so those are sort of the main ones that are out there now. Um, I'm going to go through now a few tidbits on some of the uh, research on disputes. And you, you tell me if you find this interesting or not. Oh, any questions or comments so far? OK. Um, Okay. Um, one of the things that uh, scholars like to study is impoliteness. Okay. So there are various studies about um, how impoliteness works. Uh, there's a relatively re recent one in 2020. Um, and what they did is they took like 120 different talk pages over, uh, let's see, about a 12 year period. And they took four topic areas. So they were trying to uh, spread out the kind of uh, topics that were there, but they were trying to give a, a wide range of um, analysis of talk pages and how they played out. And they found um, what they wanted to look at is how people respond to something that is offensive. Okay. And what they found is about 53% of the time, when somebody says something offensive to you, you say it back to them. OK, so people respond with offensive comments. OK, 37 percent of the time people are just defensive. And I think defensive is considered more constructive. It's like you might offer an explanation or you might ask for some uh, clarification or you try to elicit some information from them. Um, this study claims that Wikipedians do not actually prolong the conflicts. Mind blowing. So I'm not sure why that why they think that. Um, and they also, for whatever reason, think that the uh, the policies of Wikipedia don't actually get in the way of impol impoliteness, which I think is their way of saying uh, it's not really reducing impoliteness. Um, they, yeah, I wasn't able to now show you the chart, but they have a chart of all the different things that they categorize as impoliteness. Uh, the biggest one is like sarcasm and uh, being rude and things like that. Turn said, said 50% here, 
you know, in all these studies, I've seen very little on gender because most of these studies, they, they, they don't necessarily know the gender of the people involved who are editing, right? Now, there are a few studies that are based on interviews and even those, the ones that I, I mean, there must be some, but the ones that I've seen, uh, they didn't report on people's gender. Good question. Um, but I think that also goes to this question, like when you think of our disputes a, a problem, um, a lot of people think that it's a problem in the culture of Wikipedia and, the, and, and that the culture is not that inviting. And one of the main ways people think it's not inviting, it's not inviting to people who aren't like young white men who are, you know, energetic, shall we say. Okay. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I did have this slide here. Okay. So here's the slide of uh, some of the ways they categorize uh, impoliteness and what kinds of categories of impoliteness they see. Okay. Uh, this study uh, is, is really fascinating. I wish I was able to give you a slide on this. Uh, but they are looking at the patterns of behavior um, that people exhibit when they're in a some kind of disagreement or dispute on the top pages, okay? And they have five categories. Would you love to try to guess what these categories are? Okay, I'll tell you. Policy wonk, wordsmith, architect, like you're trying to shape the overall conversation, moderator, or expert. So when you come into a conversation, are you playing out one of these roles? They say most people are coming in with one of these five roles, and then they they uh, they tracked it. They looked at 53,000 um, interactions, I guess, among editors, and they're trying to figure out which of these roles are successful and which are not. And they say that three of these roles are more conceptually oriented. The architect, the moderator, and the policy wonk. Uh, what they mean by policy walk is, you know, the people who cite Wikipedia policies, right? That's their way of engaging, okay? Um, those those people, are tend, those styles tend to be less um, effective. Oh, I'm sorry, I should be. It's all right, it's all right. I, I like to look at the people. I mean, not the, your people too, I get that. <laughs> sorry. Um, but the people who have the most sort of concrete tasks, coming in as an expert, or wordsmithing and doing the editing, those people tend to have the most success or effectiveness in their roles. So that's uh, this study. I really uh, encourage you to look this over. Um, this study, uh, the next study that I want to mention again, these are just quick tidbits to try to whet your appetite, get interested in th this kind of research. This study is on gate gatekeeping or the uses the theory of network gatekeeping. Um, and they did a fascinating thing. They took 111... 111 articles, as it turned out, from two different topic areas, okay? And they want to compare what's going on with each of these topic areas, and then they do a very detailed analysis of gatekeeping. What do you think they mean by gatekeeping, by the way? They mean deletions, right? Like you are gatekeeping what gets to go into the articles, or sometimes other spaces too, but here they're looking at articles. So what gets to go into the articles? That's what gatekeeping is, right? It could be various ways of deleting, overwriting things, right? Um, so what they did, let's see if this works. What they did is they took two groups, one in French Wikipedia, one in Spanish Wikipedia, and they had, they had various hypotheses broken into the whole thing. Um, but they looked at um, French, people who are French and people who are from Algeria writing about Algeria and colonization, decolonization. Then they took people from Spain and people from, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Gran Colombia? Yes. Thank you. Um, which became, you know, different countries and, and also a decolonization uh, practice there. And so, um, and they're looking at things like, if you, if you write a lot in the top pages, does that mean you're going to be deleted less? Or if you're the kind of person who gets deleted, are you going to continue to get deleted or are you going to have a learning curve? They, I think they found that people didn't really have much of a learning curve. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and the people who got deleted a lot continued to get deleted a lot. Um, they also tried to look at like, okay, the majority, um, whether the colonizing culture had more of a dominant role or whether the, uh, I don't know if I'm even using the right terms, colonized 
uh, for post-colonial cultures, had, had, people had more of a role. So they were trying to look at that dynamic as well. Uh, there were some mixed results in what they expected, um, which is really worth reading because the, the, the French uh, setting was very different than the Spanish one. I think it had to do also with the uh, population, like the number of editors. Uh, I think there were more French editors, but more uh, post-colonial uh, Spanish editors. Uh, in any case, one of the things they uh, have done and a number of the studies have done is they try to figure out are there rival camps? Are people working in some kind of coordinated way on these disputes, okay? And again, they're looking at over a hundred articles on each side um, and they, they analyze it by looking at deletion patterns. And the idea is, can I say this right? The enemy of your enemy, here's my enemy. The enemy of, your, of my enemy is my friend. Okay, so they do all this analysis to try to show you uh, that that's worked, and they do feel that they're able to document or, or uh, substantiate the hypothesis that you can observe rival camps in these kinds of situations. If, if somebody is the lead, let's see if I can do it. If somebody is deleting my edits, okay. And somebody else, okay, so I don't know. Bob is deleting my edits. Jane, Bob is, your Bob, Bob is deleting my ed edits, so he's my enemy. Jane is now deleting Bob's edits. So is Jane my friend? Or am I going to be deleting Jane just as much as I delete Bob? Does that make sense? So you, you go support Jane in, in her deletion. Right. So, right. So, so they're studying everybody's deletions, and they're trying to figure out: are, are people like just randomly dispersed, or are they actually clumped together as if they're allied? It doesn't necessarily mean that they're allied in the background, but people are also often wondering Wikipedia how much of people are actually coordinating behind the scenes and things like that, or are they, or is it just an implicit kind of camp that develops? Okay. Another big area of research. I'm, I, I don't think I'll do too much on this. Is uh, what is really important for scholarship because they're developing all these incredible databases uh, that you can then other scholars can then research, they share with each other. Uh, they have to figure out ways to identify disputes. And they used to do it by uh, reverts, right? Or mutual reverts, right? And this was very influential, I think, in sort of understanding how Wikipedia was working back in the day. And remember, there's the three RR rule and that kind of thing. Um, they also tried things like um, looking at uh, article tags, like is an article tag that's controversial, you know, and can you use that kind of data? Um, uh, I'm trying to think what year this was, but maybe about eight years ago or so, uh, there was a, some research that came forward that was very sophisticated, looking at all sorts of quantitative measures that had to do with editing patterns, um, deletion patterns, reverts, uh, and they look not just like at the raw quantitative number, but they would map out these patterns because they were trying to distinguish the deletion patterns um, that might deal with vandalism and the deletion patterns that might deal with uh, necessary collaboration. Um, so th there was this very sophisticated study of uh, quantitative stuff, which uh, you guys might want to look at. And one of the things that they did is they said, you know, because we're, we're doing this at such a quantitative level on like editing practices, you could apply this to any language. And they did this with, I think, uh, about 10 languages, and they were able to figure out which are the most controversial topics in each of these different language Wikipedias. Another very sophisticated approach uh, that's been used in the last number of years is natural language processing. How many people know about that? Okay, maybe you could explain that because I don't really understand natural language processing. I'm I, I'm I'm a person of religious studies. I love reading these, you know, social science-y, very complex kind of studies, but I don't really understand what's going on. I read their findings, and you could read their findings too if you're not an expert on this. But the natural language processing stuff, I think, is much more geared towards, say, understanding English, and it is really English uh, bound. But they are able to figure out ways to uh, detect and predict. Um, disputes through through this examination of language and it's not like um it's not like the at the level of like you know impolite words or something like that it's it really goes into sort of the uh the rough structure of the way people are uh communicating okay i don't understand nlp so i'll i'll let you guys do that
This is a picture of Melee from uh, uh, Wiki Commons. So a lot of the studies look at topics or a field, right? Like there's a, a field in which there's lots of battles going on across the topic. And so while there are some studies that look at general practices, general uh, dispute practices, a number of them focus on, especially on contentious topics. Um, so I think I'll try to work through a couple of these quickly. Um, this study looked at edit war sequences, sequences of reverts back and forth. Um, they, they took a list from Wikipedia of uh, 1,208, uh, at the time they did the study, 1,208 controversial articles. So there's a list that's maintained, and you know about how lists are maintained at Wikipedia and the quality of it, but okay, that's what their data set was. And they're looking at sequences of these uh, of edit wars, and they, you know, they're trying to figure out, can they model the disputes, um, and can they predict the outcome of the conflicts. Um, and also, you know, they're trying to do things like, can they figure out if a veteran editor is gonna do better or not? Um, anyway, uh, all these studies are fascinating. Uh, in this particular study, there was one edit war that stood out to them because it had like by far the most reverts uh, that they'd ever seen. And it was in this article around uh, Ataturk. Okay, um, this study, um, was uh, it was also about controversial ar articles, uh, but they came up with them in a very different way. They took about a dozen countries that are known to have controversies in Wikipedia, um, and so they and then they took a dozen countries that they think were pretty bland, and that they wouldn't expect lots of controversies, and they wanted to see if they could classify the conflicts and editor disputes within each one. And they feel that they were able to do that with like 80% of accuracy. And, um, and they were looking at all sorts of little features. I don't know, I, I found this so fascinating. You might think that when you have a group of people on a talk page, it's gonna get very heated. And it's gonna go more smoothly when just two people are talking to each other, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. But they found no that dyadic communications are actually more contentious. And that if you have a, an ABA pattern, like A speaks, then B speaks, then A responds, that's not going to go well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so who would have thought this? Okay. Now, again, if you're in the research field, this is maybe an obvious thing, but do you realize that they found that if somebody in the talk page speaks to somebody else in the second person, it's going to go badly. Like, don't address people as you. Okay, so um, this is a great for this is great for analyzing the conflicts, but in some ways, it's sort of like tidbits for us. Like, how do we go about doing these kind of things? They, they have lots of little features in here. I'm not going to go into this whole study. Uh, it's pretty recent. It's it's worth looking at. Did they say what works well for talking to other people? Yeah, they do. Uh, okay, I'm not sure I remember each of these studies. But for instance, when you hedge, when you qualify what you're doing, when you express some uncertainty sometimes, uh, <laughs> they would do a thing like, uh, by the way. They would, they would analyze all the ways that people say, by the way, da da da. That apparently works. So say, by the way, don't say you, and you'll be on your way. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Oh, this, this study I, I really thought was interesting. They, they went about this in, uh, by presenting two theories of how you could explain uh, controversial articles, okay? They had 1,200, they, again, they had this database of the 1,200 controversial articles, um, and they had a, two theories. One theory is that somebody's reputation will determine how the how the conflict goes and whether they do well or not. Okay, so Wikipedia is not like a, I don't know what's the thing that has this like Reddit or something. aren't there things where you get like little badges or things as you go? Like, yeah. Right. So Wikipedia doesn't really have that for our users, right? But you can tell. Yeah, Reddit, Reddit, Reddit. What? Yeah, Reddit. Right, but you don't necessarily see that when you see the username. 
Right, right, right. Okay, so that's what they do. They, they're looking up all these different indicators of, uh, of reputation, okay? Uh, and they were trying to see, does reputation explain what's going on in a conflict? And then they have a completely different theory, which is, oh, I shouldn't think it's the theory. Right. Which is uh, what they call balance theory, right? Balance theory is that it's not about the quality of the editor, right? Or the reputation, the perceived quality of the editor, I suppose. Um, it has to do, you can predict what's going on based on there being rival camps, Okay, so again, they're doing the kind of research that's like, is there uh, enemy of your enemy kind of thing um, going on? And they ended up finding that it wasn't an either or thing, that in some ways, both hypotheses could explain the patterns that they were seeing of reverts and undos and editing over and things like that. Uh, it was a very large scale uh, quantitative study. Um, Oh, they also looked at like uh, power concentration, you know, out of this, you have idea of power concentration and so on. Okay, I, I need to go on. Uh, some of this, so some of these uh, studies are very broad, like they try to, you know, do quantitative analysis of, you know, hundreds of articles, uh, if not thousands of articles. Um, this study looked at French Wikipedia and they took two uh, topics. One was the Shroud of Turin, and one was Sigmund Freud, okay? And um, here's where, you know, they could have reported on gender. I don't think they did, but they did a, a it was sort of mixed analysis. They did some quantitative analysis of the actual site. And then they also talked to the moderators, the people who had served in a moderating function and to see whether they had, you know, how, how they had done it. And one of the things that this group found, or these guys found, I'm not, probably not supposed to, these scholars found, excuse me, um, is that um, they weren't necessarily resolving conflicts. They were moving the conflicts in a certain direction. So they would move it from like maybe less focused conflicts into something like a debate over the sources, right? And so from the scholar's standpoint, disputes were not really being resolved. They were just being managed and moved along in a certain kind of direction. And because of the topics that they had that it also gave them an opportunity to analyze um, why is it that some people seem to hold on so strongly um, to approaches that aren't really going to be consensus either within Wikipedia or within the scientific world okay five minutes. I have five minutes okay that's cool um, so that so that's the study uh, highly recommended okay this study, uh, was on colonization, okay? Um, and uh, to what extent is Wikipedia run by like white men, uh, kind, of, kind of culture? Like, is there a culture out there that is very dominant? And so they mapped out various kinds of conflicts and they decided to choose one particular conflict that really involved two users because they thought that would be a lot easier to analyze. You wanna guess which conflict they chose? Well, it turned out to be this plant. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we, we won't go into this too much. Okay. Um, I, wanna, I wanna mention that there are studies that focus directly on dispute resolution. Okay. Um, this is a study on the notion of perspective getting. It's a brand, relatively brand new study. Uh, he looked at 133,000 different messages. Um, that were not escalated into dispute resolution and 4,400 that were escalated into things like requests for comments and third party, uh, third opinion. Um, and so you can sort of get a sense of to what extent are people making an effort to get another person's and express another person's uh, perspective and does that work? Uh, this study I really loved. This was on articles for deletion. Okay, very focused. Uh, did you know, by the way, that there are like, what was, where's the number here? I mean, like a very large number of AFD debates over the years, right? Uh, they studied all these AFD debates. Uh, they, they figure out what's the default, how many of them are, are keep, how many of them are delete. Oh, um, and then 160,000 editors were involved, users were involved in these debates. 160,000 users have been involved in AFD debates. 
how many of them actually uh, matter? Um, they said about 1% of that number, like 1,200 people have generated half of all the votes, the so-called votes in AFD debates. So there's a pretty narrow group of people who are really determining a lot of these AFD debates. Um, and uh, they, they figured out ways that you could tell uh, what's going to work. Uh, one trick is uh, the very first comment in AFD debate uh, that, that also maybe mentions a policy, comes from an initiator who has some reputation. Anyway, they were able to rank what are the criteria that uh, will predict uh, how the outcome of AFD debate works. Um, oh, AFD has changed in 2017, as you may know. Okay. Um, here's a study that deals with uh, requests for comments. Um, I thought this study also really very uh, comprehensive, uh, focused on a particular uh, uh, structure. There were about 7,300 uh, requests for comments that they studied, and they were able to uh, predict, predict the outcome. They said about 10%, 8% better than you could get by a default. And they looked at size and shape and participant interest, the tone of the participants, um, and also the experience or like the reputation of the people who initiated or nominated uh, these requests. So if you're familiar with this kind of structure within Wikipedia, you now have a study that goes through and tells you um, how they work, how they've been understood. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, this is a study uh, came out also uh, very recently uh, from a legal scholar about the arbitration committee uh, and Okay, I guess I guess the really takeaway for this is no surprise, maybe no surprise to some people, um, that the arbitration committee is influenced by the social capital of the participants, by their reputation, by their experience, who their friends are, and that that influences a lot of how the judgments work. Okay. Uh, just in concluding, or at least opening it up now, I, I do want to say. <clears throat> Um, I, I got very interested in mediation back in the day. One of the things that influenced me was there was a user, guy named Sebastian Helm who uh, knew that during the Sri Lanka revel, uh, Civil War, uh, their articles sort of blew up and became super contentious. And so he worked with some of the people on different sides of the Civil War who were, I'm sorry, from different sides who were editors uh, in setting up a collaborative project to try to mediate uh, how, the, how those disputes were being handled. And that inspired me to set up a similar thing. And there were maybe six or seven of these that set up in different uh, ethnic or religious kind of conflict topic areas in Wikipedia. None of those exist anymore. Um, I think people have tried to revive this one. Uh, the Civil War ended, and so the, the project was shut down. But then I guess uh, maybe it needs to come back up again. So um, so I'm very curious like, uh, what your take is. I don't know if you're interested in any of these studies, but what is your take on dispute resolution in Wikipedia, um, should Wikipedia be putting more attention, should be creating uh, another mediation cabal, should be creating these collaborative projects to work on contentious areas, should it be following these, uh, trying to follow these studies for different recommendations, try to train everybody not to say you and to say, by the way, instead? Um, um, or is it really not a problem? Is it is the, our disputes healthy for Wikipedia? It gets people engaged with the material, right? It gets people coming to articles and wanting to edit them. You know, Wikipedia is supposedly on various levels of decline. Are the disputes something that we want to have continuing in order to create a sort of vibrant thing? So I, I'm just going to open that up. Thank you so much for uh, listening. It's been a lot of fun for me to. Uh, this is my first Wiki conference ever, and uh, anyway, thank you very much. Oh, you, you know what I think I'll do? Excuse me. Maybe I'll just have a few people say whatever their questions are. Um, and let's hear what all the questions are before we I try to answer. Great. Right. You've got a question on that. Okay, so I'll read this question, then we'll hear from some other questions. What are the rules that allow persons to resolve disputes? In short, who can qualify? Okay, thank you for that. Um, whoever you are, thank you. Um, so in terms of we presented a lot of studies. There are a lot of studies out there also that would be good to have in this discussion that show how toxic the environment is for certain groups of people. 
and let people then self-select copies of these parts or choose to edit on things, their edit behavior gets formed by the dispute process. I'm not going to edit on this topic because I, I don't want to be involved in it. So it would be good to have not only have different kinds of research if you're going to be having a conversation. Um, thank you, thank you. Yeah, also there's observation. You also kind of hinted that in one of the early one of the earlier slides that there used to be more avenues for dispute resolution, but now it's kind of shifted towards very formal structured organization where sometimes it's more probably a small dispute, but then as long as someone slaps an RFC on it, all of a sudden you just freeze it up for a good 30 days. So if, if I felt that if it, it, it is a little bit less welcoming to new beginners because uh, they they may not know these kind of structures and whenever and of course newcomers often do not know the rules as much as well as the Wikipedians so they're more like more prone to be running into conflict and have to resolve the views. Great, thank you. I'm, I'm curious to see if any of the studies have. Of that, if the self selection of people out who want to avoid conflict has caused <clears throat> stars Wikipedians to be more likely to be wanting to engage in conflict, creating a vicious cycle where people who want more disputes or discussion about it feed into then attracting people who want more disputes or discussion of more disputes. Interesting. So uh, you're asking about uh, the motivations or behavior of people who don't get into the disputes, and, and does that? Have an effect on the remaining well, people. Is that what you're saying? The selection, the people that stay on Wikipedia, because some people, when they encounter a dispute, decide to leave Wikipedia, self left out. Or that were added on things, edit in ways. They change their editing behaviors from things that actually need to be edited on. We're the women in the room. But it's obvious the congestion environment inviting more people who dig in contentious environment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. 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 people. One subject that should be edited on, excluding those from Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, my question is more about like a very early work in section. So when we look at disputes, right? Like, is there more like a priority level of work? Like, is this topic about religion, politics, and you know, different aspects? And see, like, is there way in which disputes are being like, oh, this should. I, I think what I'm trying to ask is that, like, after the previous work, there are different sectors of disputes and ability, depending on the topic in those disputes are in, and is there more priority focus on places? It doesn't more like self selection, but like, are there places where Wikipedia is like, okay, this is like a local area, this requires urgent attention to be resolved. So, can this be prioritized? I think that's my question. Like, can they be part? So, they can be the prior prioritized, or can you tell which areas, which kind of areas have more disputes? Yeah, I think that would best be your bit. And yeah. priority comes in based on like maybe the urgency of those disputes or like how much or so or the quantity of the disputes that we have. Right. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, you had a comment on that? Yeah. Well, well, let me just comment on this. Um as I mentioned, there there are some studies um that look across different Wikipedia languages. And so they find uh, some commonalities, like I'm not sure I remember which ones, like God, Hitler, Jesus, you know, that will appear on multiple Wikipedias. But some Wikipedias really have some areas of dispute that aren't shared by other Wikipedias. So you do have that issue. But then there are other studies, um, and I think I mentioned one where they had like four different topic areas, like one was in science, one was in history. I don't remember the particulars. Um, and they found that they all have dispute levels, right? You could look at their comparisons and dig it down, but I think you, you can, and, and you saw with that thing with that plant, you know, like editors manage to get upset and be rude and revert each other in all sorts of areas. You know, like uh, one of the things I, I did, because um, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to present in any useful way, I did create an article. For some reason, there had never been an article called Disputes on Wikipedia, <laughs> even though there's enormous amount of research on it. So I did this article. Um, and I don't know, I don't know. I have the feeling people are going to really fight over some of the content in this article. The fact that it's about disputes is not going to keep them from fighting. Okay, comment. Oh, I'm sorry, did you have one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
You wanted this slide? Okay. Uh, please. Is there any um, anything looking at whether or not the labeling of the topic that's of interest and the sort of special rules that they keep in place there to help uh, guide stability on contentious topics are effective? The labeling of topics? Yeah, so if it's labeled a contentious topic, oh. is there some sort of special uh, criteria around, like you know, maybe you'll get banned really quickly? Maybe you, how, how do you, how do those, I haven't noticed that. I, I should say, by the way, uh, you know, there are hundred. There's a whole. This is obviously a a field of scholarship. This is not my field. So I looked at you know a dozen articles. I wanted to sort of uh, glance at you know a dozen of the recent articles. I don't really claim to represent the whole field. Um, in this in this uh, new article I wrote or created, I guess you'd say, um, I. I used uh, a review article uh, that came out very recently of Wikipedia research. Okay, so you could look for all sorts of things in that article that might answer your question. Um, I can't think of one that actually does that uh, right now. Did you have a comment, Elsie? Oh, I'm sorry. I had a question. The study was looking at the different roles, uh, content expert, moderator, et cetera, uh, in the context of the Wikipedia research. Adaptive, or was it just some? They just don't all work. None of them work. No, no. They did say that the uh, the person who's trying to be the wordsmith, the person who's trying to be the expert, tend to have some degree of effectiveness for what they were trying to accomplish. And it was the more conceptual roles that were struggling more. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, um, I'm not in a position trying to tell you the quality of these articles. Right, like I, I'm not in their field. I can't tell you exactly whether you should be taking this with a grain, how much of a grain of salt you should take these studies for. Okay, please. The last question. Thank the you. Comment, uh, add on, on comments that I've already been presented. Uh, I think in general, disputes are helpful to the development of Wikipedia because if there is a dispute, it means that there is a problem or there's a potential problem that's been addressed, which is good. But uh, adding more on to that, I think. Um, there, we should have more of these disputes when it comes to minor articles, because I've seen articles, well, when it comes to articles like, like Jesus, Jesus or Hitler, uh, those articles all have very well addressed disputes, but when it comes to more minor articles that have a contentious topic, they're, uh, they're usually written in a, in a pretty undue way or like NPOD way. And uh, those articles, it, it stays in those, uh, it stays in that status quo until some other IP editor from the opposing party comes inside and just changes the entire content. And uh, there's just not much discussion that's going on that can actually improve the status of the article. Uh, and I think we should have more uh, disputes or discussions in those cases. And that was Great, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. You guys have been great. Uh... Please, please socialize with me. You're welcome me. Uh, I want to be able to meet people here. So thank you very much. Take care.